Oh man, don't you miss this? Yeah, We're looking I at do. years past the decorations. Fantasy Gosh. of Trees. Well, a beautiful part of Fantasy of Trees is the Village of Gingerbread Houses. They are handmade works of art. Boy, they really are. Although Fantasy of Trees is not happening this year, the tradition continues of creating gingerbread houses to support Children's Hospital. And Emily Stroud has that story. This has been a tradition that they do in a specific class at Farragut High School for the last 10 years. Lindsay Flatford, this is your baby. Why did you start this project 10 years ago? 10 years ago, we went to Fantasy of Trees and we saw the gingerbread houses. I went with my family and I thought they were beautiful and amazing. And it dawned on me being a family consumer science teacher that I had the opportunity to make these houses with my students in class. And it just so happens that first year we saw those houses in person at Fancy of Trees that my daughter had just been in the hospital and had her first overnight stay. And the child life department was so great at East, um, East Tennessee Children's that they provided her with crafts and they kept her busy and video games and they're so friendly and helpful that I wanted to give back. And so my students for the past 10 years have been doing gingerbread houses in class and sending them to Fantasy of Trees and raising money to help provide a great experience for the kids that are there, just like they did with my daughter. That's always my first destination at Fantasy of Trees. What goes into making those very elaborate houses? When we started, it was a lot different than it is now. I've learned a lot of really good lessons over the years. So I give them about three weeks. They start with a fresh batch of normal yummy gingerbread and they roll it out and they bake it and they have to cut it to size and they do create their own patterns for their houses which is a lot of prep work um, and then they bake them and they decorate them and then we build them um, and then we add all the finishing touches the landscaping and all the fun stuff you're making a fewer this year just about 16 but are they looking pretty good they look really good. We're really excited. Um, there are less of them. You know, the pandemic kind of cut the semester short last year, so we don't have as many to sell this year as we normally do, but they look great. The kids were just as excited as always, and it's nice to have a break from the craziness of, of you know, everything that's going on and the kids to have some normalcy. So, yeah. It would have been easy to just say, hey, we're not going to do it this year, but why was it important to you to continue this tradition? So the kids are continuing to go to the hospital. That doesn't stop. You know, kids get sick and they need to be cared for and they deserve the same type of attention and great experience that they've always had. And so to do that, we can't stop donating and, and helping out the hospital. So we decided to go ahead and continue on and donate all that money just like usual. And maybe next year we'll be back to normal. I think so. And I hope so. We're looking forward to that, but we're trying to make it as normal as we can right now. Lindsay Flatford, thank you for keeping up this wonderful tradition of making gingerbread houses, selling them to help Children's Hospital.